mentioned and brought up some very valid and relevant points that I think is applicable in a Sri Lankan context as well. Uh, so as Joel mentioned, I am the project officer at the Colombo Agency, and I'm currently overseeing the project preparatory work for the AFD Fishery Harbors Improvement Project. Uh, we have some others, but I specifically focused on this for today's discussion, just to keep it short and concise. So maybe Reda might be able to um, uh, uh, jump in on uh, on uh, the other uh, projects that or other studies that we have going on at the moment. So um, I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on the context in which uh, this project was conceptualized and also give a, um, a brief idea of the kind of experiences and challenges that we have experienced so far in working on the blue economy topic in Sri Lanka. And perhaps maybe if time allows it, uh, there could be a broader discussion on the uh, on the need for this inter-institutional both within within countries and within the region uh, to have a better in institutional coordination on this on this topic. Um, so as uh, you might imagine, Sri Lanka being an island, uh, fisheries is a very important sector, both socially and economically. And the fisheries and seafood industry is a major export commodity for Sri Lanka. It accounts for something like 2.3% of the exports and employs around uh, 2.7 million people, both upstream and downstream on fishing related activities. Um, so while it is a critical lifeline for many, many millions, the fishery sector um, uh, suffers from many inefficiencies and uh, issues that I think are common, uh, common themes that have been discussed in both these panels. And uh, I'll just reiterate them, but they, they seem to be common, uh, common across the region. But uh, some, uh, some government figures estimate that there, we have very high post-harvest losses, which is estimated something to be around 40 to 60%. And this is mainly attributed to the poor harbor facilities, the harbor services, the fish offloading, landing, handling, and storage practices. Um, additionally, the market conditions is very, very quantity driven rather than being quality oriented. And this directly contributes to the overexploitation of fishery resources and also the cycle of poverty, which many fisher communities uh, uh, are in. Um, and this non-discriminate fishing methods coupled with the uh, inadequate monitoring and reporting of catches um, has uh, really, make, uh, really made overfishing a long-term threat to, to the industry as a whole. So it's really in this context that uh, AFD launched a study in 2019. Uh, it was a grant to prepare a project uh, within the fishery sector that focusing on four key harbors in the Southwest coast and the project actually aims to promote a cleaner, greener, and more productive and sustainable mode of operation in these selected harbors. And uh, our hope is that it is uh, they could possibly be replicated in other harp, in other harp fishery harbors around the country in the future. Uh, so the objective is really to increase the productivity and maximize the economic benefits of these fishery resources without increasing the fishing effort. And this is a core underlying theme of the project because uh, uh, the, the sustainability of, uh, 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 the, the, of managing of the resources and the sustainability aspect is a key uh, concept that we really want to promote through this project. So the compri uh, project comprises of a mix of both hard and soft investments that are mainly focused on like uh, four thematic areas. One is to improve the harbor infrastructure by reorganizing the harbor operations to reduce these post-harvest losses and maximize, maximize the fishing output. Uh, the second is to enhance harbor management uh, 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 capacity and practices to implement more effective management and monitoring systems in the four harbors. Uh, the third is to strengthen the management of Sri Lanka's marine fishery resources by strengthening and monitoring uh, the control and surveillance uh, practices of fishery resources. And last but certainly not the le least, it's to create more integrated value chains in the sector to allow fisher communities to reap higher financial benefits and improve livelihoods. So these are the main thrusts of the projects and there are several activities and separate initiatives that are planned under these, uh, under these main components. Uh, and the scope um, is very ambitious. Um, it's, uh, it's, it will be very challenging in implementation, of course, 
Uh, but at AFD, AFD, we strongly believe that this integrated approach is very essential to address some of the kind of underlying issues I mentioned uh, before, but also that has been discussed throughout this uh, panel. Um, one of the main challenges we have really uh, faced in preparing this uh, uh, project, and I think uh, one of the speakers from MIPA really pointed this out as well, uh, is the institutional setup in Sri Lanka. So for instance, we have four main institutional actors that are directly involved in the implementation of the project. We have the Ministry of Fishery Resources and Development. <clears throat> we have the Department of uh, Fishery and Aquatic Re uh, Resources Development. We have the Ceylon Fishery Harbor Corporation. We have the National Aquatic uh, Research uh, Resources Research Development Authority. Uh, um, we have several others like the Coast Conservation and other other outlier uh, stakeholders as well, but those are the main four. And then to add to this, there are there is also the ministry and the state ministry and the various topics uh, coming under the blue uh, blue economy umbrella are distributed amongst these uh, uh, different ministries. So the institutional setup is very challenging, and uh, the reporting structures are different, uh, but yet they have very distinct and overlapping mandates as well. So the fragmentation of this institutional setup makes it very difficult to coordinate and in implement integrated projects such as this. Um, and to a certain extent, we have been successful in bringing the key actors together to the same table to kind of discuss the key uh, priorities, the key initiatives, and take some important decisions. Uh, but we have continuously observed that, uh, sorry, is that echo? Okay. Um, that the different institutions will continue to work in their own silos and strictly within their mandates without consideration for the broader objectives. Um, I, from the project itself, I can just uh, mention that, for instance, the Harbour Corporation is solely focused on the infrastructure elements of the project without consideration, without consideration for how the their hub management practices and how uh, all of that is going to implement uh, is going to have an impact on the, uh, the operation of the department's um, activities as a regulatory and monitoring body. So this is a real major challenge that we have, uh, uh, we have observed in uh, working on such an in integrated topic. Um, and I don't, I know the topic of today was to have discuss certain solutions and uh, uh, possible approaches, but. I don't have the solutions, but I would be very interested to kind of know what the other uh, experiences regionally has been. Maybe, maybe in India, I imagine the, just the sheer size of the country and the different uh, states would make it extremely complex uh, to, uh, to work on this topic. So I would be interested to know what kind of experiences they have had. Uh, on this particular aspect, because um, just to comment on some of the other uh, discussions that had that were there, I mean, I think the whole institutional fragmentation fragmentation is a real common theme that has emerged um, uh, on this as a constraint in this topic. And I think going forward, it would be very important to kind of uh, figure out a way in which we can work within the existing framework, um, understand that. Uh, that, that is the status quo for, for most of our countries, um, but how we can maneuver through that and really find a way to um, introduce integrated approaches uh, for projects such as this. So I think with that, I'll just quickly stop, but I'd also like to just quickly mention uh, uh, this fisheries project is not the only initiative we have right now. Uh, the French, uh, there is a um, another grant, it's not through AFD, but it's through the uh, French Economic uh, Service uh, in uh, Colombo uh, to initiate, uh, this has been done with MEPA, uh, to initiate a project to uh, launch a kind of technical, uh, uh, technical assistance on building the capacity to um, uh, the marine pollution, specifically on oil pollution. Uh, to launch an initiative for that, uh, for a mapping, uh, mapping and uh, monitoring activity. Um, and I think uh, maybe Reda can just chime in on the Crimario uh, uh, yeah. intervention. Yeah, I say a word 
Thank you, Panchali. Um, hello, everybody, and uh, very pleased to be uh, uh, in this panel and 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 to to take stock from uh, all what has been said today. So I'm Radha Sorgi. I'm the country director of AFD in Sri Lanka. Um, so this project, the future project presented by Panchali, is really uh, for us a flagship project because it's fully in line with our strategy to be more active in the blue economy sector and really, um, I mean, to uh, promote a sustainable management of the natural resources, in that case, blue resources of Sri Lanka for value addition, but also uh, for, uh, uh, of course, uh, our sustainability and, uh, uh, and preservation of the natural environment and resilience, also resilience to shocks, economic shocks, which we can see now, um, uh, resilience to climate change, et cetera. So I think this is a project that really shows that concretely what we can do in that. And I said, Panchali, we are we are trying to uh, uh, work in the lit a little bit. I mean, going a little bit in this direction. That uh, I mean, uh, our activity in Indonesia is a good example of that. Be being active on really several subsectors of the blue economy, uh, including um, I would I would say uh, shipping uh, with this project that just been mentioned. I mean, uh, using. Uh, digital data and satellite data to fight against uh, oil discharge and salvage oil discharge at sea. State action at sea with Crimario, which is a project of using also digital data for better communication amongst vessel and uh, crisis management uh, uh, in the ocean. So that's really being active on the state action at sea. Also, potentially uh, coastal uh, and maritime tourism with our subsidiary Proparco, uh, uh, which uh, is keen to look after uh, tourism development, but in link with uh, maritime or coastal uh, restoration uh, and protection. Um, so, really, that is, uh, I would say, we are trying to develop, I would say, a broad approach of the blue economy. Um, and also, Sri Lanka is really keen to be a hub for maritime services, and we are looking with them what can be the support of an, an agency like, such as AFD in maritime services, including uh, uh, service to vessels, service to, to different maritime operators, and these are ongoing discussions. Um, and maybe a few words about, I mean, considering the whole blue economy, what we see as challenges, uh, I think it's been, I mean, the, I mean, the institutional uh, spread out and, and, and the lack of institutional coordination has been really emphasized by all actors. And I just want to notice here that um, in Indonesia, uh, AFD has been able to do very strong uh, 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 cooperation, technical and financial cooperation in the blue economy sector. Also because there is an institutional integration and you have one operator that is in charge of uh, illegal fishing, uh, harbor management, uh, sea, uh, I mean, environmental protection, et cetera, et cetera, all together. And that helped a lot. But also as other, other challenges, I would say, um, the challenge of sustainability, I mean, the use of natural resources is always challenging in, in, in terms of sustainability, uh, sustainable uses of fish resources, uh, sustainable uses of uh, coastal resources, etc., etc. It's always a challenge for us, very strong challenge on the projects. And maybe the challenge of informality, because these are sectors where you have very small actors that are uh, really, I would say, struggling for livelihood. Uh, uh, and that are co directly connected with uh, governments or very strong uh, authority. Um, and, and, and this is always difficult to, to have a multi-stakeholder approach in this context. So thank you, that was uh, my point today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Elapola, and thank you, uh, Mr. Suage, for your, for your compliments. Uh, Panchali, if I may call you uh, Panchali, the, you, you, you've been very modest saying that you don't have solutions, and but your presentation, complemented by Reda's presentation, uh, prove that projects are part of the solution, you know, uh, with all the issues of, um, of coordination, which you've uh, aptly mentioned, with all the issues of scaling, with all the issues of going international sometimes when it's requested, which are the next step, but 
Thank you for sharing those projects. That was very um, illustrative.